Steve and Jordan head to Carson National Forest in New Mexico to explore some of the finest mountain scenery in the American Southwest. This week on Backpacker Get Out More TV. Hello everyone, welcome back to Backpacker Get Out More TV. I am your host Randy Propster and this week we're excited to get you out there on trail with Steve and Jordan in the American Southwest. Carson National Forest in New Mexico is our destination this week. We can't wait to share it with you, but before we get too far, please hit that like button, hit subscribe, and hit that bell for notifications. We wanna make sure you are informed every time we bring you another episode of Backpacker Get Out More TV. Also, be sure to find the link in the description below that will allow you to sign up for this week's gear giveaway. Each and every week, a new chance to win, great prizes from some amazing brand partners, Darn Tough, Lakey, Jet Boil, Mystery Ranch, Oboe's Footwear, Sawyer Products, Sea to Summit, Yellowstone Select Kentucky Bourbon, and Visit NC Smokies have all donated some great prizes that you could win this very week. Speaking of visit NC Smokies, our hometown of Stephen Jordan, Haywood County, North Carolina, out there near the Smoky Mountains of North Carolina, an amazing place, a great backpacking destination, and we want to invite you to come play in their neck of the woods. And what a great place to finish off an outdoor adventure with a fantastic meal, with family-friendly, dog-friendly, outdoor seating, as fresh as it gets, the Southern Porch. Now we want to invite you to have that visit to the Southern Porch in Haywood County, North Carolina. Haywood County is such a great place for hikers and tourists and anyone who wants to come to the area that loves the outdoors. Um, it's very special because every time you look up you can definitely see the view um, and that's always exciting. But if you love Southern food, this is a great place to come because we have all your Southern favorites like his pimento cheese is definitely one of my favorites. But we've got shrimp and grits and uh, wings is definitely a big hit here too. Uh, we have 13 rotating craft beers here at Southern Porch. We try to support local uh, Haywood County breweries and we're fortunate to live in an area that has great beer and we try to support all those breweries breweries here in the area. So if you are a craft beer enthusiast or want some great southern food, Southern Porch is the perfect place to come. We would love to welcome you here to be a part of our Southern Porch family. We're excited to get you out to Carson National Forest in New Mexico. But on the way, Steve and Jordan, leaving their Haywood County home, had a chance to stop into Good Sports Outdoor Outfitters, another of those gateways to adventure, a store that we see as a top-notch place for you to stop in when you're planning and preparing for your next trip. You'll find them in San Antonio, Texas. And when we stopped in, store owner Jordan had a chance to bring us up to speed on not only the great things you'll find in the shop, but the amazing, abundant outdoor opportunities that the American Southwest has to offer. While we were there, she also reminded us that there's a forgotten element to choosing your backpack, a forgotten feature, if you will, that will allow you to choose the perfect pack for the perfect adventure. We're gonna bring you that segment now during our visit from Good Sports Outdoor Outfitters. Uh, my name is Jordan Lauderstein. This is a family business since 1982. The service side of it is key for us to differentiate ourselves from the other big box stores in the city. Um, that being said, we are a sit and fit old school boot fitter. Um, when you come in, there's no I really read a review or I want that shoe, unless you've already owned it and you love it, unless you come in saying those things, we are a boot fitter. We, you come in to get educated about your foot shape in relation to that shoe and no review or anything else online is gonna help you figure out if that fits or not. So we take the time, we sit and fit, it's old school, and uh, we make sure that the product is correct for that foot shape three-dimensionally. Um, and we pride ourselves in having the podiatrists of the city and people that are referred to us from all over, the VA and everything, 
uh, all about fitting the correct shoe to that correct foot. So it's not about color, it's all about fit. So if you are in the South Texas area, uh, I would say we're definitely worth the drive. Product knowledge, service from my great staff, and amazing lineup of product. Um, that's why you would stop in this store. When you're done messing around with all the others, as we say, uh, you will come into Good Sports and realize that, oh, well, that's what a real shop feels like. That is what a high-end product and placement feels like. So, yeah. Yeah, so if you're not in the area and you're seeing this, visit us online, goodsports.com. Uh, we ship worldwide. And also Instagram, Facebook, we're on them all. So check it out. We'd love to see you. products that you see in our wall are products that are available to retailers like us uh, from the hunt category and from the backpacking category and then from the casual category or the city life category I'll call it. Um, so you have products that are hidden that aren't really known by the brands things like this Urban Assault um, highlighting their probably their most unique feature of all brands uh, which is the uh, what I call the alien egg but the three-way zip <laughs> the three-way zip is designed specifically to offer top load so if I leave it zip like that it's just a straight top loader and then it offers a three-way a three-way opening that you can completely gut it and get to what you really need to hydration sleeves organization pockets I mean really well thought out um, removable pad so if you really wanted to ultralight this thing you could but this has for a personal day pack this product has a lot of rigidity to it so if you were to load this thing complete and just take it down the trail or when you're in the urban trail on the concrete this offers some structure to it so it's got some really kind of meats meat and potatoes so when you do fill it and it's really not made to be a backpacking backpack if you will but for a day it could easily carry 30 pounds no question it's not going to poke you and you're not going to feel stuff coming through it but uh, the real hidden feature to me is <clears throat> really highlighting at their base level we'll call it their base level um, the ability for them to throw a three-way zip on this and kind of offer their unique story in one full package and then all the way down to their fanny pack i mean again very very simple but adjustable in compressibility the waterproof zipper and adjustable with straight pull on the buckle. I mean, very, very simple stuff, but all of the stuff that you see from the lightest weight to the heaviest is all built with the same mentality of rely on it, commit your dollars to it because it's gonna commit to you. Mystery Ranch is on a mission to make the world's best backpacks for a wide variety of outdoor enthusiasts. Built to be extremely configurable with a concentration on organization and accessibility. Plus, these bags are bomb-proof. They are purpose-built to assure not only usability, but durability. To learn more about Mystery Ranch backpacks, visit mysteryranch.com or check out the links in the description below. With over 1.5 million acres of outdoor abundant playground and elevations that go from 6,000 feet up to over 13,000 feet, Carson National Forest is some of the most premier mountain scenery you're going to find in the American Southwest. And we are so excited to share the adventures of Steve and Jordan as they backpack through that beautiful stretch of mountains landscape this week Joining them now out there on trail in Carson National Forest. Hello, everybody. We are in New Mexico in Carson National Forest, about to do an out and back to a lake. I'm really excited to be in New Mexico backpacking. Steve's been backpacking all over the country and never been here, so this will be our first time backpacking in New Mexico together. Let's do it. I had a perfectly cool bottle of water, but I really just wanted to drink out of this creek because it's nice and cold. And 
degrees. Both of our first time backpacking in New Mexico, so we went and asked for help at the local ranger station of where they suggest. We are at the Middle Fork Trailhead. Uh, it's gonna be pretty cold. We camped in the car last night in our rooftop tent and we were super cold and there is a fire ban in effect right now because of all the wildfires. So we have to find another way to keep warm. So we brought our pretty heavy duty sleeping bags and uh, the trail's been really awesome so far. Really pretty, had a creek crossing right at the start. So let's see what we get into. No, look at this. This poor aspen tree. Somebody had to declare their love for Julia or whoever and ruin the poor tree. These guys scar really bad. Don't carve into them. They provide us with wonderful things. to our campsite. The lake's beautiful. Uh, we can hang out for a little while. We get to dry off, but the sun is starting to get behind the peaks, so we are going to layer up. Put on some sweats, some down, and then something to stop the wind, because it's going to be a cold one tonight. I think it's going to be uh, in the low 30s, high 20s. All right, y'all, welcome to the camp kitchen. We are making this week a trail side chicken bacon carbonara. It's gonna be fantastic. Um, we're challenging you to take your mini mill out, try some, some kind of more adventurous meals out in the back country. Uh, the reason I say the mini mill, it's, uh, it's, it's killing it right now for me. Um, it has the option to put on a traditional jet boil pot. Uh, you can boil your water really quick. We're gonna use that for the, the spaghetti or the noodles. Uh, but then once those are done, I'm going to put them kind of to the side, drain my water. I'm going to kind of already cook the chicken, but I'm going to finish it off in the pan with some egg whites, some olive oil, a bunch of fresh seasoning, some bacon bits, and some fresh garlic. So gosh, it's kind of weird to say this. It feels like we've been uh, sweating our butts off most of this trip, but it's starting to get cold. Um, and I couldn't be more grateful that Jetpool has put a regulator on their systems. It keeps a constant flow. Uh, no matter if it's cold, you're not gonna see those weird drops or tweaks. Um, the regulator keeps solid pressure the whole time. That way your meal can taste wonderful out here. While the mini mo goes, I'm gonna crush us some fresh garlic. This is all prep work you can be doing kind of while your water's boiling and your pasta's going. We're at elevation too, so it's probably gonna take a good 10 minutes or so. Hopefully we'll have to finish this one by a uh, headlamp. <laughs> Alright y'all, so uh, while the water started boiling, I chopped up some fresh garlic. I'm going to slice down the chicken a little bit more, but I'm going to throw this in there. It sticks over the edge a little bit, but as soon as it gets a little bit warm, it'll, it'll fall in there. Uh, we're going to, I don't know, take about 10 minutes probably to boil and get these noodles ready. Uh, and then we'll start whipping up our, our final product. All right, so my noodles are about done. I'm gonna take them off, put them to the side. Uh, before draining them, you're gonna make sure to save a little bit of the water to kind of live the, so the sauce up a little bit. Um, all right, so my favorite part about the mini mo is I can attach this little piece right here. Where are you? There we go. Lock it into place. Get that going. I'm gonna throw my skillet on here. I got some garlic on there. Do a bunch of olive oil in there. And then I'm gonna put my chicken. And my bacon. So the idea is, to kind of brown the, the garlic, or if you add onion, 
Kind of brown those guys. Get your chicken cooked. Get that bacon cooked. And then you're gonna start to add in some of the egg whites. And that's gonna kind of thicken this dish up a bit. A little bit of that pasta water. Throw the pasta in. Mix it all around. Add your seasonings. And you're good to go. Follow you up with this. This is dangerous. Step blown a little bit. I'll survive. Do it. <laughs> Hot. I'm buying a bug. Deep A visit to the American Southwest wouldn't be complete without stopping in to another of our favorite outdoor outfitters, and that is Summit Hut in Arizona. These guys and gals know their business, and we had a chance to talk to Jeremy Davis, shop owner, who brings us up to speed on all of the great things they're doing around the store, and also talk to his associate Dave Weeks, who brings us this week's Dodging Pitfall helping you keep your feet comfortable and showing us how Darn Tough uses their warranty policy to constantly improve that next pair. Hi, my name is Jeremy Davis and my wife Dana and I own the Summit Hut here in Tucson, Arizona. For over 50 years, the Summit Hut's provided quality gear to Tucson and also the nation. We carried out hikers, climbers, backpackers, and travelers, really all adventurers. It's really a lifestyle for us. You know, the Summit Hut started back in 1969 when two teenagers thought it would be a great idea to open up a store, and they called it the Summit Hut. The Summit Hut has two lo locations here in Tucson and a website that also serves the nation. We're a staple here in Tucson and the outdoor community. One of the things that we pride ourselves on is our staff know where to go and they can give you great advice as to where to go depending on the season and what you're doing here in Tucson. So we've got darn tough socks. Um, we love these socks because of their durability. These guys do a great job at reinforcing some of the high wear areas. I'm going to show you heels, toes. These are the things that you're going to beat up in the sock. Yeah, these are incredibly durable socks. You're going to see a lot more stitching, padding in the high wear areas. These are super comfortable, but really durable. A lot of times they'll take these socks and just run them through machines and torture test them. They are extremely good on the trail and they'll last a really long time. If you manage to, to get a hole in one of these socks, you can send it back to the company and they will give you a new pair of socks. They also go over all the socks that are sent back to them and they inspect them at their wear points and they develop new methods of manufacturing to reinforce those wear points that they're seeing in their return. It's a great company and they do a great product. When you're in the area, come look us up here in Tucson at Summit Hut or before your trip, join us at summithut.com. You can't take full advantage of hiking if you don't take good care of your feet, and that's why we love Darn Tough socks so much. They offer a variety of colors and designs for men and women. They're super comfortable because they're made from merino wool blend that's also antimicrobial so they don't get funky. And best of all, the socks are so durable that Darn Tough offers a lifetime warranty. To learn more about Darn Tough socks, go to darntough.com or click the link in the description below. 
Once we had Dave Weeks at Summit Hut talking about socks, we had to pick his brain about footwear too. It's that combination of socks and shoes that are going to keep your feet comfortable out there on trail. So he brings us this week's instant upgrade talking about oboes and some lacing techniques that can really improve your fit. So when you're out on the trail and you're experiencing problems with your boots or shoes, one of the things you can do is use a Sherpa knot with it. It's just a lacing technique that'll help you tighten the shoe to your foot and avoid any slippage in the heel or through the instep and just give you a better fit so you can hike more confidently on the trail. So I tend to use a Sherpa knot for folks that have a little heel slippage and it's very easy to put into the shoe. Just pull the top lace, thread it back through, and then cross. And then when you're lacing, down and back towards the heel, cross over normally, and tie it off. Generally, that will hold you into the heel cup of the shoe a lot better than just normal lacing. Obos Footwear. We plant a tree for every pair sold. One million and counting. <laughs> That's a lot of f***ing trees. Let's get back out and join Steve and Jordan on trail where we see how just a little bit of improvisation can go a long way to improving your experience, how a camp pillow can help you sleep cozy at night, and why leave no trace, pack it in, pack it out, and properly cleaning your camp dishes is something, a skill that is, every backpacker should know. All right, so just uh, hypothetically speaking, say somebody in your party brought the wrong size press. You've got a, a bandana um, or a, I don't know, if you want to get real ballsy, an old sock. <laughs> you can put your coffee in your water, make some cowboy coffee. Let it steep for about three minutes or so and then put your bandana over this, put the lid on, pour. So, take that off then. Looks like you're about to do a magic trick. I know, right? <laughs> this is magic. This is some MacGyver stuff. Bandanas are your friend going backpacking. You never know when or how you might need them. All right, so maybe in this MacGyver uh, test, we spilled a little bit. So if you can, go with the jet boil press. It's way better. <laughs> <laughs> the lid popped off, I believe, was the, was the issue there. Just leaked a little off the side, that's all. But in a pinch, I'd say it works pretty well. All right, we've talked about our mats, we've talked about our sleeping bags, we've even showed you the liners, uh, but now it's time to dive a little deeper into the sleep system and talk about the pillows, and even better, the pillow lock system. I'm just gonna slap this last one on here right now. Just a tiny little sticker. It's almost like a fine Velcro-like material on one side. You get four of those on there, and it's gonna stick to a lot of the Sea to Summit pillows. I'm using the Eros Down, it's kind of my favorite. Uh, can't beat having a little down in there. And we like to blow ours up just a little bit, that way it's kind of comfy. 
So a lot of times in the backcountry, you'll find yourself doing this thing where your pillow's going one way, your head's going the other way, and you're, you're kind of fighting all night. Um, I really, really appreciate this pillow lock system. As you can see, I can lift this thing up, shake it around, turn it upside down, and it's still gonna hold onto it. And with features like that, the sleep system's gonna ensure you get a good night's sleep. And since everybody likes their pillows a little bit differently, we've got this really nice fine-tuned feature. Uh, if you just open the inflate valve, to where you can just put your finger in there, deflate it if you need to, if that suits you, keep it that way, or if you're one of those really firm folks, add a breath and it'll be really nice and thick. This is uh, also probably the last time you'll see me use this combo. We're headed to some really warm weather, so you're going to see probably one of the other four pillows that Cedar Summit offers in its uh, pillow lock system. Uh, and then if you're one of those folks that just love that five-star luxury, they also have some foam-based pillows that really, really uh, make you feel like you're sleeping at home. Something you should really familiarize yourself with before you hit the trail is the 7LNT principles. So that stands for leave no trace. And it's basically seven guidelines for how to leave the wilderness uh, better than how you found it. So it's a way to keep things pristine and better for the next people who come through. Um, the one I really wanna focus on with you guys today is the pack out what you pack in. Uh, we're seeing a lot of high impact areas that have broken glass, trash everywhere. I'm sure you guys have experienced a lot of your loved uh, places that have become really trashy. So I just want to have a conversation about the importance of that and kind of how I personally pack out what I pack in. Um, so I typically bring a gallon Ziploc bag and this is what I put all my trash in. Um, the bigger pieces like this, obviously you'll see if they're lying around, the, the biggest thing to focus on is the, what's called micro trash. And that's typically like the corners of granola bars or just like tiny little pieces that the wind will catch and you won't even know that they're, they're, they were even there in the first place. Um, so that's something to be aware of. Uh, I like having it all together like this because that helps keep the scent away and it just keeps it all together. Um, so that's really important. We're at a campsite right now that is a high impact area for sure. We've seen a lot of broken glass, a lot of fishing line. Um, we actually even found one that had a hook still attached to it. And if you didn't just see that chipmunk run behind me, there are chipmunks oh everywhere. They're everywhere here. I don't know if I've ever seen one that big before. I can't see him. He's on the other side. Hi. Are you a chipmunk or a squirrel? Yeah, so that's exactly what I was going to segue into that next. So the reason that there's chipmunks and birds flying around everywhere here is because they're used to people feeding them and they're used to there being food lying around at the campsite. So they are accustomed to coming here for food, which is not good for the animals. It's not good for the people camping. They can chew through your packs. They can chew through your food bags, stuff like that. So it's really not good for the animals to get used to associating people with food. That's why it's really important to hang up your food every night. Um, another really important pack out what you pack in thing that a lot of people don't really realize is your food scraps also. So coffee from this morning, that's got to go with you. Um, coffee and different foods can change the pH balance of water and the ground and it can have a um, large impact on the area. So I'm going to show you guys how I do my dishes. Um, usually on a one or two night trip, I typically just rinse it out, but the key is to have a bucket or something where you can pull the water out of your water source and have it away from it. So I'm just going to use this to rinse out my pot. If I'm out for more than a couple of days, I will have actually two buckets and one of them will have soap in it and the other one will be a rinse bucket, but I'm just going to rinse them for now since we're heading out today. So that one's clean. Okay, once you have done that, there's this is what's considered gray water now. So this has all your food particles, coffee grounds, everything in this water over here. And there's a couple of different ways to get rid of your gray water. So I've actually dug a hole and I've put a bandana on top of it. And so what you can do is use that as a strainer and it'll catch your food. And then nothing but just water will go into the ground and then you'll cover that hole back up with dirt, almost like you would with a cat hole when you go to the bathroom. If you don't want to dig a hole or you don't have the ability to dig a deep enough hole, you can use um, a bowl or some other object to dump it into that way. 
the key if you do that is that you'll have to disperse the water. So once the water is drained all the way out, you can see how the food's kind of gathering around the bandana. What I'll do then is stick the bandana in the sun and wait for it to dry and then just scrape the food off into my um, gallon Ziploc bag. So, and then your bandana's good to go. And that's how I do my dishes in the backcountry and how I try my best to leave no trace. During their road trip, Steve and Jordan had a chance to stop into Mountain Sports, another fantastic retailer in Arlington, Texas. We checked in with Josh Davis and his team where we learned more about the shop, but we also got brought up to speed on the specs, just the specs, of the Lakey Cressida Cortec. Hi, my name is Josh Davis. We're at Mountain Sports in Arlington, Texas, a family-owned outdoor store that's been here since 1972. We started um, renting canoes and they slowly, Bill and Jim, our founders, just figured out like, oh hey, like we're renting a lot of canoes, let's get more canoes. And then they bought a fleet and then they started selling them. And then in the 80s, we moved to where we are today and changed our name to Mountain Sports, launched a website and have grown to be the staple in our community that we are now. We cover categories from skiing and snowboarding to rock climbing, kayaking, from whitewater disciplines to fishing and touring. Uh, we also do disc golf, hiking, camping, from big car camping, multi-room family tents to your ultralighters, and kind of everything in between. I would say what makes us unique is when you walk through our front door, it doesn't feel like you're in Arlington, Texas anymore. It instantly has this mountain mom and pop vibe that just doesn't exist in our area now of, you know, big box stores and floor plans. It just has a unique homegrown vibe. Hi, my name is Josh Davis, and we're here at Mountain Sports in Arlington, Texas, and today I'm going to talk to you about the Lakey Makalu Light Ultralight Trekking Poles. Personally, I use these. I like them for a lot of different reasons, but they last a really, really long time. I've had a set of these for about 10 years, and they've been all over the place with me. Uh, one of the things I really like is their speed light adjustment, so they're super, super easy to adjust, whether you're inclining or declining, whatever settings you need based on your height, they're super easy to adjust. Three-piece aluminum construction, all three sections are aluminum. It adjusts from 135 centimeters down to 100 centimeters for different user heights. And it's got their Aragon handle with their Corktech material as opposed to the foam or the rubber. Downhills, I will hold this more like the pommel on a cane. So it grips, it, you know, use my shoulders instead of it all being on my knees. But super comfortable grip, easy to use, and they make days on the trail much, much easier. If you're not in town, you can find us on mountainsports.com. We're also on Facebook and Instagram as Mountain Sports Texas. Lucky trekking poles are a great addition to your pack to help with extra stability and help take the pressure off your knees and ankles. Lucky trekking poles come in a variety of lightweight materials and styles. The innovative handles are super comfortable and they offer a unique adjustable strap system. Plus, they break down really easily to store in your pack when you're not using them. To learn more about the products from Lecky, head on over to lecky.com or click the link in the description below. While we were hanging out with Josh and his team at Mountain Sports, we had him take a closer look at the Sawyer systems and how you can make sure to not over tighten and extend the life of that gasket, an important piece of the puzzle, to make sure you've got clean water out there on trail. Hi, my name is Josh Davis, and we're here at Mountain Sports in Arlington, Texas. And today we're talking about the Sawyer water filters. It's always important to bring a water filter with you. Even if the water looks clean, it might not actually be clean, and you want to be able to filter out the bacteria uh, that might be in there, like your Giardia, Cryptosporidium, all that bad stuff. Sawyer uses a hollow fiber membrane in their water filters and gets 99.9% .9 repeating um, percent of all bacteria and viruses out of the water. And today we're giving you a quick tip on how to use these. It's important to not over tighten these. You don't need to get your climbing hands on. You can just, just gently tighten that on and it's gonna work. The risk that you run with over tightening it is this white gasket in here can get lodged inside of your water bottle and be lost and then ineffective. So make sure to not over tighten these so that it can continue to work for you throughout your journeys.
From staying hydrated to staying bug free, Sawyer products have been a staple in my pack for years now. Today we're taking a look at Sawyer water filtration systems. Whether you choose to squeeze or let gravity do the work, staying hydrated is a key part of backpacking. And with their uh, lightweight design and ease of use, they've become my favorite pick for the backcountry. To learn more about these or any of Sawyer's products, head on over to Sawyer.com or visit the link in the description below. It's time to get back out there on trail with Steve and Jordan, where they talk about the fact that a little out and back can do good things for the soul of a backpacker. So if you ever find yourself, I wanna give you guys a pro tip. If you ever find your poles slipping, even when you have your speed lock closed, uh, this is your best friend here, this little clear dial. All you have to do is spin that tight and it changes the tightness of your speed lock. And so if you do find that when you're putting pressure on it, it's slipping, uh, give that dial a spin and that should do it. Super pro tip. Bad. It's time to toast another fabulous week of Backpacker Get Out More TV. And Steve's gonna bring us a recipe, the smoky whiskey mule that tastes as good as it does in large part because of those high limestone levels in the water. Ingredients matter, destinations matter. And we're excited that you joined us for this week's episode exploring Carson National Forest. Now let's toast with that smoky whiskey mule. All right, so this week we're making a smoked mule. Uh, it's pretty neat. We're gonna take some of our Yellowstone bourbon. Uh, we're gonna throw a couple slices of bacon in there, and you can let it sit in there, call it marinade, um, from anywhere from 10 minutes to overnight, depending on how smoky or bacony that you want it to taste. Uh, once that's done, we run it through a strainer. Um, if you don't have one, you could probably use cloth or a bandana. Um, we'll throw some lemon juice in there. We uh, put a little bit of brown sugar on the bacon as we cook it, so it's candy. Makes it a little bit of sweet. Then we're gonna pop open a bottle of ginger beer. Add some ice to our concoction. Pour the ginger beer. Then I'm gonna stir that around real good. If you have a shaker, do that. Uh, 
we're uh, kind of still living out of a truck, so we don't have that option. <laughs> and voila. Wow, that's stellar. Yellowstone bourbon is handcrafted in the state of Kentucky. These small batch whiskeys are the work of seventh generation craftsmen, resulting in a unique taste, perfect for the trail. Plus, a portion of every bottle sold goes to helping preserve our national parks. Cheers to that. To learn more about the products from Yellowstone Bourbon, head on over to limestonebranch.com or click the link in the description below. Thank you so much for joining us again this week on Backpacker Get Out More TV. We look forward to joining you again next Thursday night as we head east, heading back to the Ozark Mountains in Arkansas. We'd love to have you join us same time, same channel, just one week from now. We're going to send you away with another fantastic tune from our friends in Haywood County. Balsam Range is going to play us out with the girl who invented the wheel. See you next week on Backpacker Get Out More TV. Don't